GitHub Copilot is one of the most popular AI code editors out there that can help you code 10 times faster if you know how to use it correctly. And if you give me just a couple minutes, I'm going to show you how you can use Copilot in order to become a more effective programmer, especially if you're a beginner and new to all these AI tools. Now I'm going to assume you already have VS Code installed as well as have a GitHub account with Copilot enabled. When you open up VS Code, you'll see this little icon that says chat, maybe down here as well. To open up Copilot chat, you can open up the chat window by clicking that button, and you have different ways to use this. The main three ways to use the chat feature is initially, by default, I think it starts with the ask, where this is just like question answering, asking ChatGPT questions, it gives you a response. That's what Copilot can do, and you can do that with your code base, which is very neat because this way you don't have to copy and paste back and forth code between your code base and ChatGPT. It's all done through Copilot. Copilot automatically reads your code base as context. Then the edit feature allows you to actually modify files in your code base as well as add any it deems necessary. Then the agent tool is like the edit tool, but it allows the agent to automatically reprompt itself in order to add any additional files or make changes beyond the ones that you specified in order to best answer the prompt. And this is what we're going to use for now on. You can also specify which model you want. You can manage different models. You can add different ones. And I'm just going to use the default one here. So in order to make an actual app, we can just essentially ask the chat a question. We can ask Copilot to make us an app. And I'm going to specify using this API, using these web frameworks and using this styling. But we can also take it a step further and actually attach an image as context, especially with the reference and the vis as a visual reference for the styling, which is pretty cool. And then we're going to let it go and have the agent build us ChatGPT. And after some tweaks, I was able to get the app up and running, although it didn't do the dark mode like I asked. It still ends up working, so I can just say something and then it'll use the OpenAI API key I provided to run the app. And this is the main feature of the chat window. And this is how to use the chat window feature of GitHub Copilot. But Copilot also has two generally other main ways to access the models in addition to the chat window that are a bit faster. Let's say, for example, I have this function right here and I want to write a function header or a commenting from it. I could ask it to do that. I could ask to do that in the chat window, but a much faster way to do that is actually highlight, highlight the text using my keyboard and press Control I, and that will bring up the inline editor. So here I can ask Copilot to add documentation for this function, and then it'll just add it right above it. But even when you're writing code, there's also an important feature called the tab autocomplete. Let's say, for example, in one of these functions, I'm just start typing in C O N O L E, and then Right after this, you'll see the rest of basically what I was trying to type in already being added in after the cursor. So I can just press tab and then it'll just add that in. And this is very useful, especially when I'm doing multiple tabs and I can just add them in and they'll just be added like so. And this generally speeds up your coding and especially things for debugging and error messages by quite a lot. As a software engineer, most of your work honestly involves a lot more debugging than actual writing code. That's part of your job is to solve the software problems. So instead of using the agent, we're actually going to use the ask function of Copilot to help us solve a bug. So if you open up, if I open up the app again, you'll see that something's broken with it. And it'll say uncaught reference error app is not defined at app.tsx187. And if you go to app.tsx and you go to line 187 right here, you'll see that did not find name app, you can do an app. So there's a couple different ways using Copilot to just fix it. You can do it in line here in which it'll rename app into the name that I renamed it. Or what you could also do is ask the chat window. Let's say to fix any function names you see in here to make sure app is correctly spelled. If I do something like that, or I ask it to potentially debug something, then it'll actually go through the app and it'll make changes. So I can accept and run these changes. And then after doing that, I can decide whether to keep them or whether to not keep them. So for example, this change I will keep, but whatever this is doing here, I'm actually going to reject. And 
I don't know what it's doing up there. I'm also gonna just reject that change. And then if we go and rerun the app, we will see that the app now works. Another cool feature that Copilot and a lot of these AI code editors have is the ability to modify the terminal that you're working on. So let's say I want to do press control I, I can actually use that same inline editor that I'm using in the code. I can just use that in the terminal to actually write me a command. So say for example, I can ask it to write me a, or write me a CMD command to list all the files in my code base, for example. And then if I move this up here, where I can actually run the command itself and it'll run it and paste it in my terminal and then we'll be able to see all these files that it ran from executing the terminal command. Recently, Copilot also added the ability for you to access MCP servers in the chat window. And you can actually see this if you go into the agent mode, you can go to configure tools. You can see existing tools like, for example, this is a server tool that I defined in my Claude desktop app. So it's able to automatically find that. But let's say like I want to add my own new MCP server, right? I specifically want to add this uh, Firecrawl MCP server, which essentially just does web scraping. So what I can do is I can actually take this following JSON command. It also works with cursor. And then here in VS Code, you can add it to your VS Code settings, or you can also add it to your repository. I'm just going to add it to the repository just because it's quicker. So you can create a .vs code file, and then under here, you're going to type in mcp.json. Then under here, you're going to paste in your MCP servers file. Then once you have your API keys or any other settings that you needed to, you can just paste them in this JSON. And then one cool part about Copilot is that Copilot automatically found new tools available and automatically found this MCP server. So what we can do is we can configure them. And so when we go to the tools here, we're able to see not only our MCP server weather, but also our Firecrawl MCP server, which allows us to do web scraping. And we can actually test it out. Let's say that I wanted to web scrape or actually summarize the, rep the repository above. And then what you'll see is that when it's actually running, you'll, it'll ask you, do you actually want to fetch it? And then after fetching it, then it'll run, it'll run the Firecrawl MCP server, and then it'll access it and give the response. GitHub Copilot is a really impressive piece of software, but it's only impressive if you know how to use it and if you know how to code yourself. If you don't know how to code, I suggest using something instead like Lovable or another low-code AI tool. Copilot's biggest competitor, Cursor, is also being used by a lot of people, and I actually have a video on it if you want to watch that and compare it to with Copilot. But my overall impressions based on using both of them for a few hours, I would say that Cursor is generally better if you're like an indie hacker, you run a startup or a small company, whereas Copilot is generally better if you're in a large enterprise or if your company already has access to a Microsoft license. But in terms of which is better functionality wise, they're both very close to each other, but I found that Cursor is slightly less buggy and Copilot actually brings up a lot of old and outdated code, which can cause errors. And I found that Cursor produces less buggy code and ultimately helps me code faster. But at the end of the day, what using these AI tools have taught me is that they are a source of leverage. But if you don't know how to code already, they're not going to help you out as much as if you already know how to code. And so therefore, it's important to understand your fundamentals and understand everything that you're searching up for. And yes, Cursor and Copilot can give you recommendations, but if you want to code the fastest, you better know how to code yourself. And if you're interested in learning more about AI and seeing how they're actually used in apps and how I've used AI, especially these code editors to help me win competitions, check out the rest of my channel as well. I think you'll like it.